third thing we're going to talk about is class of control. In class of control, two of the most important things are controlling who can call where and controlling the geographic routing. For who can call where, we want all the phones in our company to be able to access the numbers they need to dial, but we might want to restrict some phones too. For example, in the break room, we may have a phone there and we don't want it to be able to dial to long distance numbers or international numbers. Geographic routing is also very important. If you're in the Toronto office and you dial 911, you want that call to go out to the Toronto 911 call center. Or if you're in Peterborough and you dial 911 from the Peterborough office, you want that to go to Peterborough 911 and the fire department or the police department will end up at that office. The first thing we're going to look at are the two basic concepts we use in class of control. They are partitions and calling search spaces. If there's a partition on the line, it says, who can call that line? If this were my phone, a partition says, who can call me? A calling search space on a line controls, where can I call? Basically, partitions are a name assigned to a set of numbers and patterns. A calling search space is a list of partitions. It's a list of the numbers that I can dial from my phone. Let's look at a simple example. When you configure a line, if you don't assign it a partition, it's callable from anywhere. Right now, these lines don't have any partitions or any calling search spaces, so everybody can call everywhere. So let's assign these numbers some partitions. I'm going to put these two numbers in the top partition, and these two numbers in the bottom partition. Now remember that a partition is just a name assigned to a set of numbers. So, now that I've assigned partitions, who can call whom? Nobody can call anybody because I haven't assigned a calling search space. That brings us to rule number two. You can only call a number if that number's partition is in your calling search space. What we had configured so far was a partition on each one of these lines. And nobody could call anybody because we hadn't yet configured our calling search space. So I went ahead and I gave these two lines the first calling search space and these two lines the second calling search space. Now the first calling search space has the bottom partition in it and the second calling search space has the top partition in it. So who can call whom? Can I make a call from this line to this line? Intuitively, people say, yes, you can. They assume that if a number is in the same partition as yours, you can call it. The first number has the first calling search space. This number is in the top partition. So is the top partition in the first calling search space? No, it's not. So you cannot make that call. Can I call from this line down to this line? This line has the first calling search space. This line is in the bottom partition. Since the bottom partition is in the first calling search space, we can make that call. If I wanted to call from here to here, then the top partition would also have to be in the first calling search space. Let's just look at one more example. Let's say I add extension 2666. I haven't configured any partitions, I haven't configured any calling search spaces on this line. So who can call it? Anybody here can call this line because it's not in a partition. This line can't call anywhere because it doesn't have a calling search space. Unless there's another extension that's not in a partition. Then this number can call here because it's not in a partition. Remember our first rule. You can always call a number not in a partition. And our second rule, you can only call a number if that number's partition is in your calling search space. On the whiteboard, I have a list of the route patterns that we configured in another lesson. We learned that a route pattern points to a route list. So I configured a route list for headquarters PSTN. Now we want to use partitions in calling search spaces to control who can call where. 
For partitions, this is a traditional way of doing things. The first partition I have is headquarters internal partition, which actually doesn't contain a route pattern. It actually contains a list of all of the directory numbers in the headquarters building. So the headquarters internal partition will include a list of those directory numbers. We have our emergency partition, which includes both our emergency numbers, 911 as well as 9.911. We have a service partition that contains all of our service numbers. We have a local partition which contains our two seven digit patterns as well as our ten digit pattern. We have our long distance partition for long distance numbers in North America and an international partition for our international dialing. Now remember, this partition has to be in your calling search space in order for you to access those numbers. So you have to have the headquarters long distance partition in your calling search space in order to call a long distance number. So let's have a look at some calling search spaces. So now I've built my calling search spaces. I have headquarters internal no 911 calling search space. Now you want to make sure that if you have a calling search space with no 911 in it, that you put that in the name. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to have a line that has no 911 access? But this is a calling search space for incoming calls on a gateway or a trunk. So that would just include the internal partition. I have headquarters internal calling search space which includes internal and emergency partition. That might be for a lobby phone or a phone that you have in an elevator. We have the headquarters local calling search space which includes the local numbers, service, emergency, and your internal numbers. That might be a student phone or you have that one in the kitchen. Our Headquarters long distance calling search space includes long distance, our local partition, our service partition, the emergency partition, and all of our internal numbers. And finally, we have our headquarters international calling search space, and that would include our international partition as well as all of these ones listed. Finally, I'm going to add the pattern 91900 XXX XXXX. As we all know, a 900 number is a toll number. And if I allow anyone to access that number, we're going to cost the company money. So what I have to do is block that one. The way I'm going to block that number is to add a restricted partition. and that number will be in our restricted partition. I'm going to make sure that international and long distance have the restricted partition in their calling search spaces because if I don't do that, they can match the pattern 1900 right there. So that way when they dial 1900, it matches this pattern here and it's blocked. However, some people are allowed to dial anywhere to any number. So we're going to add a calling search space. We're going to add the headquarters unrestricted calling search space. And by leaving this partition out and all of these partitions in, it's unrestricted and they can call anywhere. So now I control who can call where. We have the control to say where you can call, who has restricted access to where they can call, and who has unrestricted access. 